At some point in the past, our ancestors' view of their journey to death evolved stories that featured a path, or more precisely, one path that diverged into two, one heading for the light, a straight and easy path, the other a dark and dreary, along a twisting, dangerous road. And in this video, we're going to examine what our ancestors' stories say about these paths and see if we can understand where this motif originates. So, welcome to the story of the two paths of death. And welcome to Crackenford. Within the Eddas of the Old Norse in Scandinavia, we see descriptions of the Godway, the Gothvigur, and the Hellway, the Helvigur. And these can be directly compared to the path of the gods, the Devayana, and the path of the fathers, Pitayana, of the Vedas, and the Upanishads of India. And this provides a good starting point to consider this an Indo-European belief, and allows us to find other mentions of similar paths from other Indo-European texts. Now, in the Ferryman video I made some months ago, I mentioned about the Bridge of Separation from Zoroastrian texts, and this is a bridge all deceased must cross, whilst it is also near impossible for the living to cross it. Now, once the deceased do cross this bridge, the righteous ascend to the best existence, or the house of song, but the liars and the unworthy are sent down to the worst existence, or the house of the lie. We see a similar proposition from Plato in the Greek culture, where he writes that one path leads to the Isle of the Blessed and the other to Tartarus. But there are other mentions in Greek texts, from the Orphic hymns to Parmenides' poem. And so, considering these, the Indo-European pattern of belief can be understood that there are two paths, one to a good place, the other to a bad place. But did this belief originate with the Proto-Indo-European speaking people? And what isn't clear is what this actually means, as whilst we have two paths, and where they go is always described in the same way, the way you decide your path varies. We see sometimes a criteria that is based on ethics that place a deceased person on a particular path, and the influence here is very much religious. If someone has aligned their values to that their gods, they get to take that path to the light, or if they were born into the right bloodlines, they were then more likely to take the path to the light. And so we see that this was initially something only given to the greatest heroes and believers. In fact, the earliest texts talking of the Elysian fields were reserved for those who had kinship with the gods. In Plato's Republic, we are told that at the time when Kronos ruled, the living had the foresight of when they would die. And since the dead came to their place of judgment fully clothed, those who could afford so would ensure they wore elaborate and luxurious attire, hoping to go to a better place based on their appearance alone. But when Zeus took over, this ability to foresee death was taken away from mortals, and the deceased appeared naked at the point of judgement. We also see a passage in the Prose Edda, a lesser reliable of the Eddas, where Snorri Sturluson writes a passage that reads, It is the greatest deed when Odin made a man and gave him a soul, which shall always live and never perish. But the corpse will rot into earth or be burnt into ashes. And all men who were upright and well-mannered lived there with him, in that place called Gimli or Vingulf, while wicked men fare to hell or onwards to mist hell, which is below it and is the ninth realm. Now this passage clearly reflects a Christian bias due to being written several hundred years after Iceland converted to Christianity, and Snorri uh, uses Gimli as opposed to the place Valhalla, uh, but still inferring the good go to somewhere different to those citizens that are dishonourable. But a judgement was more than this. You see, we know Valhalla was the place where half those who had an honourable death went, as this is attested to in the Poetic Edda. But equally, we see in the Prose Edda that those who die of old age or disease go to Niflheim, the ninth realm, and the place considered the opposite to Valhalla. In effect, we see that whether one died a warrior's death made all the difference, and this ethical judgement aligns to what was written by Plato. And if we then look at Zoroastrian's Yasna, we see this passage. The best shall be for him, the knower who speaks truth to me, the right formula, which is of the truth, wholeness and immortality. Now here, the term the best, as used earlier in this video, in the phrase of the best existence, technically means 
the heavenly realm and is a saved place only for a Noah to go. And this is a term we see in Parmenides' poem where the author speaks of himself as the Noah. And it is a term that in Greek corresponds directly with the Avastan. However, what is a Noah? What do they know? You see, there was a difference between the type of knowledge a follower of Zoroastrianism had compared to that of the Greeks or Old Norse or Vedic. Come to that. And we even see in the Rig Veda the phrase, the Noah of the Godway's path. But this is in a passage that refers not to a path to heaven, but to the god Agni, and not due to knowledge, but due to having performed a sacrifice in the right way. In effect, we see a purpose for the paths and reasoning as to why they are used, but there seems to be a lack of information to which construct was the proto in the European form of this path. We see in early Indo-European mythology that the European branch of migration had an agricultural uh, and almost raw approach to death, initially with no judgment and no choice. And this changed to religious transformation and the hierarchical reforms in society. Whereas the Indo-Iranian cultures seem to have picked up this judgment early on, as seen in stories such as those in the Ferryman video. In fact, it was this lack of clarity in this motif that made Bruce Lincoln, someone I'd highly recommend reading, uh, for anyone who's interested in myth and Indo-European cosmology, uh, it made him change his whole view on how to approach these myths. You see, th to me, it is clear that the path motif is represented initially at least as a way of splitting society into hierarchies. The priests or nobles and heroes went to the light, the others to the dark. And this split evolved and transformed with religion with ethical conduct influencing the path one could take. And so again, we see religion evolving and transforming our myths and our culture's behaviours and beliefs change accordingly. But the original Proto-Indo-European thoughts of the two paths, when put amongst the myths of Coilo the Cover, the Ferryman and the other world, that we may never be able to reconstruct apart from saying it is almost certainly a later development though. So whilst this may be a little disappointing, our, our journey to death doesn't end here because I'll be talking about dogs next. Well, I hope I will. I've been a bit distracted and, and ended up reading about 10 books rather than one. But they link to the stories of death and in particular to some gods associated with death. And it's a very fascinating and lightly trodden subject. And so if that sounds interesting, Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell if you want to be alerted when the video is released. And on that note, I'll take a path out of here and hope you enjoyed that journey and learned something new. So please stay safe and stay well. And this was Cleckenford.